What up guys, it's your boy the hater. I'm out here walking the streets, going for a nice nighttime walk. And I thought to myself, what better thing to do than to make a video about the thing that everyone's been talking about, and that is MJF's promo from Wednesday night. Now, along with MJF's promo, as we mentioned in a previous video, Tanahashi debuted. Great. Nobody cares about that jobber. So let's talk about the person that people actually do seem to care about a little bit, MJF. Now, I will say this. The promo, it was delivered well, right? He, he knows how to cut a promo in many ways. However, he still does not understand wrestling. And the thing that bothered me the most was when he was saying how, like, the fans don't get anything. They're outside. They're just smarks. Not all of us, motherfucker. Not all of us are like that, right? So without any further ado, let the hater explain this for y'all. So what up, cucks? It's your boy. And here we're going to talk about MJF's promo. Number one, MJF comes out and he starts running his mouth, running his little mealy mouth about how he, like, is an insider and understands anything. The reality is this. I'll put it to you straight. MJF doesn't get it either, motherfucks. I know that sounds, like, very arrogant from me, but I'm telling you the truth. This is how it works. P promos have to have a purpose behind them, right? This promo had no purpose. This would be the equivalent of S.A. Rios, after losing to Eddie Guerrero at Backlash, coming out and saying, I'm underrated. Oh, I should be getting the, the spot, not Stone Cold. This is, this is how it felt. And I'll tell you why, right? Because what makes MJF great on paper, right? I mean, actually, his accolades, right? He's won the little Jabron tournament twice, but he hasn't seen any championship gold. You know, he hasn't really challenged seriously for any championship gold. He had like one title match here and there, but, you know, nothing special, right? He's only good because he says he's good. Now, I know people like him, and I'm not going to say he's completely horrible, like he's better than Jungle Boy, but the facts are what the facts are. On paper, he, can, he doesn't have a leg to stand on, especially after the loss that he just suffered to Wardlow. You know, he came out being like, I'm the best. You just got beat in a squash match on pay-per-view while you're running away and begging for your life. You know, the, the next night, he, the next appearance, he can't come out there and, and then, then all of a sudden he thinks he's the best again. What happened to the guy that was running away? Like someone should have come out, like fucking Jay Lethal should have come out and be like, you're the best? What are you talking about? Play the video, just like The Rock would do back in the day. Play the music, Jabron, and then play the video. Shut your mouth, right? And he should just play the video of MJF being like, please, 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 I'll quadruple your salary. And then that's it. That's it for the whole MJF promo. That's it for the whole pipe bomb. You know, it's done, right? CM Punk's pipe bomb made sense because what happened was CM Punk won the number one contendership and his contract was coming up in terms of kayfabe, right? So it makes perfect sense that now he's in a position of unique power where he can say, oh, I have an opportunity. You can't take it away from me, right? And if I win the title, I can do whatever the hell I want. So as a result of this newfound opportunity, right, and newfound power, I now have a bargaining chip. I can start saying whatever the hell I want, and there's nothing you can do about it because I am owed a number one contendership, uh, you know, uh, match, right, or a title match, I should say. I'm owed a title match, and until they get my title match, you can't fire me. And the day of my title match is also the last day of my contract. So what's the worst you can do? You can fire me after? What if I win, right? That was the whole point of the Pipe Bomb promo. In this case, MJF holds no cards, right? Like, Tony Khan should have come out and been like, who the hell do you think you're talking to? Beat it. Get out. You're fired, right? That's what should have happened, right? Because from a kayfabe perspective, and I understand he was bringing kayfabe, but from a kayfabe perspective, there's no reason why anyone would want MJF in their company. He's one in three this year, right? And the one is probably, like, he probably beat, like, who knows who he beat? Probably like Joey Janelle on his last match or something, right? He, like, he, he's one in three. And the, his last loss was one of the worst losses in company history. So let's put that into perspective a little bit, right? But with that, with, with that on the side, right? Let's look at the promo for what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be this groundbreaking, you know, character-making promo. And it just isn't. And I'll tell you why. Even though I agree with most of the things that he said about how New Japan is boring and how, like, you don't need to do flips and kicks to, like, get over and, you know, because he's obviously over, right? I also don't agree with the other sentiments that he makes. That somehow he's better than everybody else. He's not better than everybody else, right? I'm very confident that Frankie Kazarian could also go out and cut this promo. Trent Beretta can go out and cut this promo. The reality is they just, they just can't. They're not allowed to. Not they can because of their inability, because anyone can cut that promo, but they're just not allowed to. It's as simple as that, right? I've pointed this out before. Same thing with CM Punk and John Cena and Triple H, right? If you look at Triple H doing a promo against someone or The Rock, right? But a lot of people get a lot of leeway, right? Triple H, like, The Rock can come out there and say, Undertaker, you know, you think you scared of The Rock? Like, the whole point of the Undertaker is you're supposed to be scared of him. But if The Rock's like, I don't care, you know, you can turn your head sideways, just stick it up your own ass, right? Then it's like, that's it. The allure, the mystique of The Undertaker is gone, right? It's the same thing with any other supernatural character like Bray Wyatt. If someone came out and said, dude, you're a goof. You know what I'm saying? You keep thinking that you're this monster, but you're not. All I see you do is say nonsense and get your ass beat by Randy Orton every couple of years. 
You know, you're not a threat. You're not like, why the hell would someone like Braun Strowman be scared of Bray Wyatt? Why the hell would someone like, uh, I don't know, Matt Riddle be scared of Bray Wyatt? Matt Riddle could easily like counter if he wanted to. Like, imagine, imagine if uh, anyone could say whatever they wanted, right? Like, the, the Fiend could come out and say, oh, I'm scary and I'm going to get you, Matt Riddle. And Matt Riddle could just say, dude, I would beat your ass in 20 seconds. You're fat. The end. That's it. Boo. They boo Matt Riddle a little bit. And then, and then people realize, they're like, oh, wait a second. Matt Riddle's right. He would destroy this guy in, in, in a fight, right? It's a, it, it wouldn't even be close, you know? So it's like Matt Riddle could easily play that card if he wanted to. Like Matt Riddle could go, could, could go to Brock Lesnar and be like, dude, I have a shot against you, you know? Brock Lesnar probably beat his ass, but I have a shot against you. He go to the last, he says, I have a shot against you, man. I, can, I might be able to beat your ass, you know? And you're talking all this shit. But no, Matt Riddle, a good wrestler, understands that he has to play a character, right? MJF and these other people don't get it. Same thing with Triple H. I put him in the same category. Triple H coming out and being like, you know, just saying things that, about people that they can't say about him. This, this is all this promo was. MJF basically came out and did something that other people aren't allowed to do. Because anyone else could do this. Joy Janela, I'm sure. I'm sure Joy Janela, when he got fired, or Big Swole, when she got fired, wanted to come out and say, well, wait a second. Fuck you, Tony Khan, you piece of shit. You racist fuck. I'm sure Big F Swole wanted to say that. And, 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 for example, say like, well, this company failed. You know, you said you're going to be like racially inclusive and you failed. And here's the evidence for that, right? But no, they didn't let her do that. Of course they didn't let her do that. Because it's Big Swole, nobody cares, right? MJF is allowed to do that, and he didn't get over, like the promo didn't get over because the promo was amazingly cut. I mean, it was a good promo, I'm not going to pretend that it wasn't, but it got over because he was saying things that other people cannot say, right? Like, if MJF says, as he did, if he says, Tony Khan, you have a boner for like former WWE guys. Now imagine if Swerve Scott came out, or whatever the fuck his name is in AEW, or the Bearcat Keith Lee, if one of them came out, or Miro, or any other former WWE guy, and said, look, MJF, I understand. You're trying to get to WWE. I've been there, all right? It's not your time yet, kid. You know, I've been there. I'm better than you and everyone else in this company who had to start this bullshit company and now I come and take all your money by doing nothing, by adding nothing, right? Someone could say that because that's him too, but they don't, right? They don't. Keith Lee has to follow protocol. Keith Lee is Keith Lee. He has to go out there like an idiot and say, oh, you're going to swerve in our glory. Like, it's like, this is the dumbest thing I've heard in my life. Swerve in our glory? Why don't you go fuck yourself instead? You know what I'm saying? So that's the problem, right? That's the problem. These, like Christian Cage could easily come out to MJF and be like, look, dude, like we get it. You think you're the best wrestler in the world, and maybe you are. But in the Attitude Era, you would not last one minute. Let's be honest, right? Christian Cage could easily come up and be like, dude, I am a legend. I am a, I am a Hall of Famer. You're not going to be a Hall of Famer. You know? Mark Henry, Mark Henry could, 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 could come out and be like, dude, I'm the world's strongest man. I could crush you in one second. Big Show could be like, dude, you're a tiny, tiny guy with a goofy face. You know? Anyone could say a lot of things to anybody, right? It's just that some people are not allowed to do it. And the people that are allowed to do it, they're, it happens, it so happens that they're the ones that are allowed to cut the great promos, right? Now, for me, someone who understands entertainment and marketing and business and wrestling, I, get, I, am, I feel like I'm more attuned to what makes a good promo. Not just, a, not just a, a specific promo, but a good promo in the sense of what kind of wrestler can do a good promo. Like for me, two of the best promo guys ever, Christian Cage and Bubba Ray Dudley, right? Bubba Ray Dudley was, was told to go out there and he was allowed to say nothing in WWE. And he still made things memorable. You know, that Royal Rumble 19, 1999 promo where him and Devon were like, you know, New York sucks basically, you know? Like he, it was like a 30 second promo, but it was memorable, right? And it wasn't because Bubba Ray was, was told, hey, go out there and say whatever you want. It was because he's good on the stick, motherfucks. Same thing with Christian, same thing with Edge, right? There's a lot of these wrestlers that are just really good at talking. John Cena is one of them too. Believe it or not, Cucks, he is, you know? There's, and Randy Orton is not, for example, right? But Randy Orton, you can give Randy Orton a mic and say, hey, go out there and say that Edge is a shitty husband and that his children are going to be like upset when, uh, when you cripple him. And he does that and he gets heat and people are like, wow, what a great promo, Randy Orton cut. No, it's not a great promo. It's he's allowed to say something that other people can't say, right? Other people could, 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 could cut the same promo. They're just not allowed to. And this, this MJF promo really encapsulates that. People are going to pretend that it's this great promo, but he, he's not saying anything new. He's saying something that I've been saying for a long time, right? I understand I'm not an AW wrestler, but I've been saying, me and other YouTubers and other people have been saying, what the hell is Tony Khan doing signing Keith Bearcat Lee? That's basically what MJF said. He said, what the hell is he doing signing Keith Bearcat Lee? Right? It, it, it means nothing, you know? So that's what I'm saying, what the fuck? You know? MJF's promo is overrated, just like MJF is overrated. He is, he is a discount store Miz, right? But he is, has the impression that he's like The Rock. And it's not his fault. Honestly, it's not his fault. Dave Meltzer comes out there and says, oh, MJF is already surpassing The Rock. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, can you imagine if, like, like 
I got into a little debate with someone, and they were like, oh, if, if Miz and MJF did like a promo off, Miz would, do, Miz would lose, MJF would destroy him because MJF is raw. I'm like, no, that's because the Miz is told, hey, go out there, say some things, but don't say things that are going to embarrass the company. If the Miz was an AW, he would be like, MJF, you're obviously a Miz ripoff. Everything I do, you've done, but worse, right? You're not as good looking as me. You don't have a fine wife like me. You know, you're, you're not WWE champion. That's sure as shit not true, right? You've never made event at WrestleMania, yet you have all this flagrant, like, self-worth as, as if you're something special. You're an indie nobody, right? And if it weren't for AW, you would be a complete nobody. Nobody would know you, and nobody does, right? Whereas I, The Miz, am, a, a, like... At least, at least the Miz is like a D-list star. You know what I'm saying? Like he could, like the Miz would bury MJF in a promo if if the gloves were off, right? If the Miz could say whatever he wanted to, like people like the Miz are people that bully people like MJF in high school. You know what I'm saying? Like he would destroy him. The, the MJF would never be the same again, right? And then forget about like if he did like a promo against like Bully Ray or something like that, he would go home crying probably. You know what I'm saying? Like it wouldn't even be close. But it, it, it's because he is coddled, he is contained in this environment, and in that environment. Some people have, have apparently agreed that he's like the best on the mic out of everyone in AW. So they chose him to be the one to cut the promo, right? Same thing with CM Punk. People are like, oh, CM Punk earned his push. No, this McMahon one day said, all right, we're going to do the storyline. Who fits in here? Right? And they're like, CM Punk's good on the mic. He's an indie jobber. He looks like shit. So I think we're going to pick him, right? That's what happened. It wasn't like CM Punk, like, you know, but, like earned it. Oh, he won against all odds. Daniel Bryan became the champion. Shut up. It's part of the storyline. You know what I mean? Get over yourselves, dumbasses. And that's the problem. The problem is people think that, C that, that, that MJF cut, a, cut a, a promo. It's obviously a work. You know, it's obviously a work. And obviously what's going to happen is he's going to have another few matches. He's going to go to WWE. That's, that's without saying, right? He's a WWE guy through and through. You can just tell. Uh, for him, AW is a stepping stone. He's not going to stay there and like, you know, be thrown through, through tables for another three years. No, he's going to go to WWE and have a Randy Orton-esque career. I mean, obviously without the accolades, he's never going to be like Randy Orton. But, you know, he's going to have like a missed career. He'll probably be like in a Bobby Roode uh, EC3 spot for a while. And that's probably going to be it for him. You know, he's nothing special, you know. Like, you look at him and you look at EC3 and you're like, all right, they're like the exact same character in many ways. But EC3 is like better on every metric. He's better looking. He's stronger looking. He's bigger. Uh, he's stronger, period. Right? He's more charismatic. He has better moves. You know, like, like he's just better in every, every, every possible way. He's more experienced. You know? But it is what it is. It doesn't matter. Because people are like, oh, you still suck. Dude, get the fuck out of here, Jabron. <laughs> and that's the thing with, with people like MJF. MJF is good for AW. And that's about it. He might even be good for WWE or NXT. Right? But he's not good. And people are, are inflating this as if this promo was something incredible. All he said was the truth. You know? And people, I guess, I guess the AEW fans are so stupid, they don't realize that, like, that, that these things are happening before MJF mentions them. They don't realize, oh, wait a second, and that is true. There are a lot of WWE guys, uh, you know, coming over here. Fucking Stokely ha Carmichael, Stokely Hathaway, Stokely, <laughs> Stokely Carmichael is a real one. Stokely Hathaway is out there, and, and, and like, Jade Cargill is like, oh, this is the best guy on the mic. Says who? Who the fuck said that? No, he's not. He's not the best talker in, in anything. You know? Nothing at all. He's a piece of shit. He sucks. Fuck, fuck Stokely Hathaway. This guy's a fucking jobber. He's just taking up, like, he's taking up uh, money from other people that might deserve it. You know, sign some new people that no, I've never heard of. Do that, right? And then with MJF, do it. I'm not, I'm not against the storyline. I'm not against whoever the hell this leads. But let's not pretend that this is something amazing or something new, right? Furthermore, I will end by saying this, cuckolds, and this is very important. I know that this promo was targeted towards the neckbeard demographic. Here's how I know. Just like every other pipe bomb promo, right? Uh, or, the, or when AJ Lee cut her shitty promo, it was the same thing. Pipe bombshell promo. Like, what the fuck comes up with these names? Like, it's like, I, sometimes I just wish, like, The Rock was out there. Just, he just came back and he said, you know what? I want The Rock wants you to take that pipe bomb, you know? Shine it up real nice. You know, I, I would just want The Rock to come out here and bury these jabrones, like, once in a while. He's just come back just to bury people. But all these pipe bomb promos have one thing in common. Well, two things in common. Number one, they're done by wrestlers who have an overinflated sense of self, right? It's never like, you know, obviously Triple H is never going to cut this promo, right? Edge is not going to cut this promo. You know what I mean? The Rock is not going to cut this promo. Jericho is not going to cut this promo. These are people with actual talent. It's always these jabrones who are just jobbers and who think that they're as good as The Rock and Jericho. Like CM Punk in his head thinks he's better than Stone Cold and The Rock, which is insane. It's just preposterous. He's not, he's not even close, right? He didn't even move the needle a bit, right? But the facts are what the facts are. That's one thing they all have in common. And the second thing, which is more important in my opinion and more salient, is that all of these pipe bomb promos, all these earth-shattering promos, all are about complaining. 
it's a bunch of people complaining. This fits the neckbeard demographic perfectly. The neckbeard demographic, the way I see it, is a bunch of people that never really like try to do anything. They never amount to anything, right? Now, a lot of them are young. They're in their 20s and 30s. You know, they can get their ass off the couch, hit the gym once or twice, you know, go get an education maybe. I don't know. I don't know them personally, but I know that they're people that have resentments. They're like, it's like the, the overlap between the neckbeard and the insult community is insane. They're people that like, they, they always thought they were smarter than everyone, right? And then like, they always thought like one day, that, that, that preppy guy that stuffed me in lockers, that preppy guy, I'm gonna overcome him. I'm gonna be richer than him. And then what happened was that preppy guy went to college and got like a, a job and now he's making like, let's say $80,000 a year. The next beard lives at home and he's like, well, what happened? I'm supposed to be better than that guy. Yeah, who said so? Who said he's supposed to be better than him, motherfucker? You lazy pig, get the fuck up, do something. You know, and that's the problem. It's exactly that. The, like CM Punk and MJF are the neckbeards of wrestling, right? They're the people who are like, well, I worked, like CM Punk thinks, he's like, well, I worked harder than Randy Orton. I watched Mizawa versus Kanahashi. So Randy Orton never watched, watched Mizawa versus Kanahashi. Yeah, Randy Orton doesn't have to watch Mizawa versus Kanahashi because Randy Orton's Randy Orton and you're CM Punk. Randy Orton goes to the gym and looks like a god and then CM Punk doesn't. And that's why Randy Orton doesn't have to go watch bullshit Japanese wrestling to put himself over like on the forums. Randy Orton's like, I'm Randy Orton, like, you just look at me. You know, I've said this before. Like, I was watching wrestling when I was a kid with my mom, and Randy Orton comes on when he was the IC champ. And, and my mom is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who is this guy? I'm like, mom, that's, he's new. He's Randy Orton. I was like, this guy should be on a postcard. You know, that's how handsome my mom thought Randy Orton was. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, is this, right? There's other intangibles that wrestlers like MJF and CM Punk just don't have. They're not the best looking guys. They're not, they don't have the best physiques. They're not the best like in, in the ring. They're not the, the most charismatic. They don't have these things, right? So they have to put themselves over. What does CM Punk, AJ Lee, and fucking MJF have in common? What do they have in common? They, they are great because they say they're great. That's the one thing that connects them all. Like, there's nothing great about AJ Lee. She's like, I'm great. People are like, nah, you know what? She's great. Oh, she reminds me a lot of the girl that I used to like uh, that left me at Comic-Con. Oh, yeah, she's great. Oh, MJF, oh, he reminds me a lot of me if I had some muscles. You know what I mean? That's the problem, right? The problem is the neckbeards identify too much with these jobber wrestlers. And as a result, these jobber wrestlers get some response. And as a result, these jobber wrestlers, eventually, the ones that are good, because like, the neckbeards also identify with Keith Lee, right? But Keith Lee can't cut a promo to save his life. You know, I don't know, I don't know why I ever thought this guy was charismatic. I mean, this guy comes out there now, oh, swerving our glory. I mean, get the fuck out of here. So what I'm getting at is this, cuckolds. It's very, very simple. Very, very simple. You know, these promos are not good. And in my opinion, they're, they're low level. It's, it's not even that they're, they're below average because MJF, I believe that he does have some, some talent. He has some ability. If someone said MJF, man, think of a storyline. Dude, make it good, but don't make it generic. Don't make it derivative of CM Punk, right? Move on, you know? Like, I don't want to see another MJF CM Punk feud where he's like, CM Punk like, used to be the voice of the voices. Shut the fuck up. No, he never was. He never was. You know, like, like anybody, let me put it to you this way before I conclude. Put it to you this way. Anybody out there that likes wrestling, you know, around the time that CM Punk was getting his bullshit push, R-Truth was getting his push, right, with The Miz. Now, and you know what, not just R-Truth, but The Miz too. Now, anybody that during that time thought CM Punk deserved the push more than R-Truth is a moron. It's as simple as that. Now, maybe not a moron, maybe they just don't understand wrestling. But R-Truth is 50 times the wrestler that CM Punk is. He's 50 times more charismatic. He's 50 times in better shape. He's 50 times more appealing. He's 50 times better to look. He's 50 times better at anything. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, CM Punk got it. You ask yourself, why did R-Truth not get it? And why did CM Punk get it? And I'll give you the answer right now, cucks. I'll give it to you right now. R-Truth is not a bitch. And R-Truth did not spend his career telling the world how he's the best wrestler in the world. R-Truth did his job, did a great job, and that's why he's there. And that's why he's the Hall of Famer. You know, CM Punk, on the other hand, his, from the beginning, he's like, I'm CM Punk, and I'm better than you. No, you fucking aren't. You're, he's not even better than me, let alone better than, like, you know, like some pro wrestling, like, gods, like The Rock and Stone Cold. What the fuck are you talking about, CM Punk? Get the hell out of here. Same thing with MJF. MJF, his entire gimmick is I'm better than everyone else and you have to believe me. If you don't, you're wrong. That's the entire gimmick. That's the entire MJF character. You know? But it, it, the character doesn't behave that way. He gets his ass beat by Wardlow. Our truth on the other hand, is out there reinventing himself, trying to be funny, trying to be serious, trying to do everything that he can, right? And that's why he has a job. That's why our truth, his job is safe. He's nearly 50. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with the Miz, right? These are soldiers. These are guys that go out there, they do their job. They're grown men. They're like, yo, I understand my role, you know? And they don't take any shame in it, I'm assuming, right? I don't think our truth takes any shame in the fact that he's never been WWE champion, you know? People are like, oh, we need, a, we need, uh, it's been a while since there's been a black champion in WWE. Why don't we give it to Kofi Kingston? Why don't you fucking give it to our truth 
You know, you know what? You know what? As a matter of fact, take Kofi Kingston, take R-Truth and say, you guys are going to have a real fight. The winner becomes WWE champion eventually. R-Truth would destroy him in like 10 seconds. It'd be, it'd be over. He would beat the shit out of him, out of uh, uh, Xavier Woods, out of like fucking uh, Drew Gulak. You know what I'm saying? R-Truth is like a real dude. You know? And that's the problem. People like R-Truth get overlooked. And people like CM Punk and MJF and AJ Lee, these bitches, these bitch made people who just complain and complain and complain, eventually they, they get their own. Whatever happened to paying your dues, some people say. Fuck dues. Who gives a shit? People like R-Truth have been paying their dues, but fuck dues. Obviously, that's not how it works. Obviously, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, and that's totally fine. However, it should be recognized. It should be recognized that people like MJF have not brought anything to AEW. I don't care if he's the first or second most viewed person ever. He's the second or first most viewed person ever because he's competing with people who just have matches. Like, I don't think I've ever heard the Young Bucks cut a promo in AEW. You know? Kane Omega doesn't cut promos. Right? He's the only one basically that cuts promos. Him and Jericho and CM Punk. And these guys are probably the, the, the three top drawers, right? Eddie Kingston doesn't, doesn't, doesn't draw anything because like, he, 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 he sucks. You know, he's better than Eddie Kingston at least. But the point I'm trying to make is this you have to give people a chance. And if you don't want to give them a chance, that's fine. Give the chance to MJF. I don't hate him personally, but the promo I did hate. I hated it because it represents everything wrong with wrestling. It, 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 it represents like people like CM Punk jumping the line over people like Mark Henry, over people like R-Truth, over, in some ways, people like The Miz. It represents him jumping over, over people like Cody Rhodes, cuckolds, right? What about that? It represents people like The Miz jumping over. I mean, sorry, people like CM Punk jumping over, right? Back in the day, it used to be very, very simple. The clearly best, best wrestlers, Stone Cold, The Rock, etc., right? We're at the top. Everyone else was trying to get there, right? And it wasn't this easy road. It was hard. Once in a while, you'd have a Kurt Angle or a Jericho debuting, and they would, they would get, like, boosted through there. But generally speaking, it was difficult. Mark Henry had to bust his ass, become a goof, become that tag team with Kofi Kingston, right? For years before they gave him a shot, right? But guess what? His shot came organically, and Mark Henry's a legend. CM Punk is not a legend. When it's all said and done, CM Punk, MJF, these jobbers, are gonna go down like bitches. They're gonna go down as a, as a blotch in the history of wrestling because when you see it, you're like, wow, I can't believe I got behind this guy uh, and wanted him to become champion. He just, all he did was complain. He just came out and complained every week. Oh, why isn't Tyson Kidd getting pushed? You know why Tyson Kidd's not getting pushed. Oh, why isn't Luke Gallows getting pushed? You know why Luke Gallows isn't getting pushed. Hey, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real. I just threw a Joe Biden in there for you. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, cucks, the hater is out up in this bitch.